coming in. Good morning, Damascus and Facebook family. We pray that we find you blessed and favored of God. And we thank God for this another opportunity that he has given us to gather together to worship him. And we've gathered in his name to worship him. And he is worthy to be worshiped and to be praised. So we're going to ask that you would stand with us and join in with us now as we worship him in song. Lift your voice, clap your hands, stand to your feet, and let us praise the living God this morning. I love Jesus. He's my Savior. When the storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. Because I love Jesus, and he loves me. I love Jesus. He's my Savior. When the storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. This morning we come with thanksgiving in our heart. He's been so good to us, so we all got a lot to thank him for. So I want to come this morning saying, y'all pray with me. Let's just give God all the thanks, all the grace and the mercy. Because he's been so good to us. If I laying down last night not knowing whether we'll see another day. Father God, you saw fit early this morning. You touched us with a thing of love. Waking us to a brand new day. Father God, we say thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for having us to come out to your house to worship you one more time. Father God, we just thank you for all the things that's going on in this world, Father. You bless us to be able to hang on to come to your house and give you the praises. Because Father God, we know that you're in control no matter what's going on. 
we know that you are still in control. And we just thank you for that this morning. Father God, I have so much to thank you for it. I don't have the time this morning to thank you for all the things. Father, here would take all day and I still wouldn't thank you for all that you do for us. But we say thank you right now. Father God, we pray that you will continue to bless us this day through this service, Father, that you will understand our hearts and that you will give us a clean heart, Father. Clean us up from the inside. Father, I pray that you will fill our hearts with the love, love for one another, Father. Father God, that if we can love one another, we know that everything going to be all right. Because, Father, when you came, you taught us how to love. So, Father God, help us to love one another. Be there for one another. Father God, we ask these things this morning. Father, we just ask that you bless the sick and the shed in this morning. Have mercy on them. Be with them, Father. Bless the bereaved families this morning. Oh, Father God, just lay your hands on them, Father. Let them know that you still are in charge. Oh, Father God, we thank you this morning. Father God, we pray that you would be with us all through this day. Father, not just in this church when we go out on our jobs or in the street. Father, we can tell somebody about you. Father, that we always should be able to tell somebody about our Father. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you for these blessings. Father God, just have mercy on us this morning. Father, we also come this morning and ask for forgiveness. Forgive us, Father, of our sins. Father, for we know we all have sins. Only one, Father, that had no sin. So, Father God, forgive us this morning. Clean us up, Father. Help us along the way. Give us what we need, Father, to do the right things. Oh, Father, have mercy on us, Father. Father, we ask that you bless the man of this house. Bless this shepherd, Father. That you would touch him this morning, Father. Touch him in a mighty way. Father God, you placed in him to give us what you give him to give us. So, Father, we ask this morning that you would hide him behind that old rugged cross. Father, when he bring forth the word, Father God, that that word will not fall on their heads. Father, build him up where he's torn down. Strengthen him where he's weak. Father, just bless him this day. Father, we ask this right now in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you will give us continue to keep us. Bless us, Father. Strengthen us. Help us to do your will, Father. These and all things ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dee. Praise the Lord. We do want to pause for a moment uh, in memory of those brave men and women that died defending our country and um, for those that have served and have gone on. Let us just bow for a moment in honor and memory of them as we um, observe this Memorial Day weekend. so much. Praise the Lord. I tell you, this is a different uh, day than it was on last Sunday. <laughs> Amen. But I thank God for this day, this cool Amen. Um, morning with the overcast. It's like you put a Amen. covering over us. So this is a beautiful day for worship. Amen. Amen. We don't see so many uh, crowding over in the shade this morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen, we're going to go ahead and get into the Word of God, and we do thank you for coming and sharing with us uh, uh, on this fifth Sunday. We just thank God for all of his blessings. Father, we come now to say thank you um, for this opportunity. We thank you for the power of preaching. We thank you for the mercy that you've given to the preacher. I pray now, God, that you would hide me behind the cross and that you would be exalted and lifted. Father, as I stand, I do ask that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. I thank you and praise you for all that you are and all that you do. For it's in Jesus' name I do ask it. Amen. Amen. Turn with me, if you would, to the gospel according to Luke. Luke, if you would. 22 
And a few verse I'd like to read for you this morning out of that particular chapter, beginning at verse number 54. Verse number 54, and this is how it reads. And then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, and there were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, but he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Amen. Amen. I want to spend a few minutes, if you would allow me, talking from this subject as it relates to Peter and it relates to us. A failure does not have to be fatal. A failure does not have to be fatal. As a matter of fact, failure is not fatal unless we settle into that situation. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, as we look at this passage as it relates to Peter, I would say that to deny Christ would be one of the uh, worst sins that we could do. It was Jesus that said, if you would deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. And here we find in our text that Peter denied the Lord three times. Amen. You know, that's one of the things that we need to be cognizant of because Many of us, no, all of us, are guilty of failing him. There is no one that is alive that has lived except for Jesus Christ who's not sinned against God. Yeah, amen. amen. And the problem is this. Failure has a way of causing us to hold back on what we could be doing for the kingdom. Well, I want you to remember this. Failure does not define your future. Amen. A failure does not define your future. Uh, another amen would go real good right there. Amen. How many of us hold back because when we get excited about doing something for God, Satan has a tendency through men and women to bring up our past failures. And always remind us of the things that we have done wrong. Amen. And we allow those things to stop us from going into the place where he, that God wants us to and becoming who God has destined us to be. And if we would ever come to realize that a failure does not have to be fatal and failure does not dictate and determine your future. Yes, there are some steps we take and some directions we take that are not the... Uh, preferred steps, but God is able to use everything yeah. to his good. Amen. I'm reminded of Romans 8 and 28, for all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. All things, that's not just the good things that happen in your life, but that's all things that happen yeah. in your life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Peter failed, and, and look at that person next to you. You're looking at someone that yes you see them now but this is not where they've always been oh, yeah. amen. Amen. 
there's been some that has some shortchanging and some shortcomings, some sins, some problems, some faults, some failures in their lives. But look at us now. Amen. Look at you. Look at you. You're not what you used to be. And uh, thank God that your past failures and faults did not determine and dictate your future. Because if that would have been the case, you wouldn't be here now. Have I got a witness? Well, I want to tell you, when we look at Peter, Peter is in good company. He's not the only one that failed God. Amen. Amen. I failed God. You failed God. All have failed God. And if anybody said, that's why I got a problem with uh, high-minded, uh, critical, uh, self-righteous, and uh, overly righteous Christians. That when you come into their presence, they make you feel worse than you did before they got there. As a child of God, we are to be lifters of people, not ones that drive people down. But we are so critical. Oh, I know I'm right about it. We are the most critical of all people. Amen. As if we forget where we've come from. But as I look at Peter here, Peter failed him. Yes, he failed him. Why did Peter fail God? He failed God for two reasons in our text we see right off. First of all, the Bible declares that Peter followed afar off. And be, understand, my brothers and sisters, if you're a child of God, you've got to walk close to him. You've got to stay close to him. Peter failed God. He denied God because he followed from afar. The second reason we find in our text that Peter failed God is because he was seated there with the wrong crowd. Yeah. Amen. You've got to be careful the company you keep. Right. You just can't hang around everybody. Right. Amen. You just can't take everybody's advice. You can't follow everybody's lead. Amen. Everybody is not a good example. So you got to be careful the company you keep. We find that Peter was not in the company of Jesus, but he was in the company of those, yes, that was criticizing and accusing Jesus. you got to be careful. Listen to the people that you're around. Listen to how they talk. Listen to what they say. Listen and uh, observe their attitude and their actions. And listen, you need to know if there's a red flag, you need to run as fast as you can. You're not designed to be in everybody's company. Everybody is not meant to be in your inner circle. You got to love everybody, but you can't hang around everybody all the time. And more than likely, I know I got a witness. A lot of times they bring me down instead of me pulling them up. Peter followed afar off. Listen, Peter's in good company. He's not the only one that failed. There's many that's failed him. Even in the book, we find others that have failed. Oh, yeah. Amen. But listen, my brothers and sisters, one thing you need to understand, that when it comes to failing God, all have sinned and come short of his glory. Amen. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Amen. All have sinned, not y'all have sinned, but all have sinned and come short of his glory. Oh, yeah. Peter denied him. He denied him. The Bible says he denied him three times. Peter denied him one in identification. Amen. He said, I don't know him. I don't know him. He didn't want to be identified with him. He, he denied him, my brothers and sisters, in relationship. I'm not a part of him. He denied him not only in relationship, but in, the, in, in discipleship. He said, I don't even, I didn't, I'm not a follower of Jesus. He denied him again. In ignorance, saying, I don't even know what y'all talking about. What's going on? I'm not a part of this. You're making this up. Yeah. He denied Jesus. And the Bible said when he denied him that the Lord looked at the, the, the cock crowed. And then Peter looked at Jesus and Jesus looked at Peter. Let's look at this for a second. One thing we need to understand that if, and listen, most of the time we fail God, it's not in the place of our weakness. But it's in the place of our strength. The very area that you think you're strong in. That's usually the area that you fail in. And the reason is this. Because you get too confident. And cocky. And you relax. You let down your guard because you say I got this. And it's normally in those areas that you're strong in. That you fail in. 
I know I got some witnesses. That was Peter. As we observe the life of Peter, Peter was one that was always willing to speak up. He was always willing to stand up. And he was always willing to step out. Amen. Peter was that one. Peter's the one that said, Lord, I will never deny you. As a matter of fact, I would die with you. Peter is the one to say, not me. Peter's the same one that said, if that be you, bid me to come. And Peter's the one that was willing with boldness to step out of the boat. Peter was one that you cannot deny had courage and strength. But we find Peter, just at the voice of this little girl, he cowered down and he failed God in his strength. And most of us fail God in our strength. Amen. He's not the only one when you look at Moses. We know about Moses. Moses, the Bible says, was the meekest man that ever lived. That's power under control and strength under control. But what did Moses fail? Moses fell because he killed that Egyptian and then he cursed the rock and smote the rock when he wasn't supposed to because he got angry and beside himself and lost the man that had control was known as a person with control and having it under control, lost control. What am I telling you? Yeah. Moses lost it in his strength. You got to be careful. Those things you think you're strong in, you got to be careful because that's the very area that Satan is tempting and he's tempted to attack you in. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Not only do we find that in Moses, but we also uh, find that in the life of, of Abraham, right? Y'all yeah. remember Abraham? Abraham is known as who? The father of the faithful. Abraham, God declared that Abraham is the father of the faithful. Abraham is a man of faith, but look where Abraham failed. Even when the famine came in the land and he went down into Egypt, and what did he do? He lied about Sarah being his wife. Why? Because he was afraid that the king would kill him. Where is your faith? Abraham is a man of faith, but in his strength, he failed. Amen. Not only do we find that in uh, Abraham, but we also find that in the life of David. David, he was a man after God's own heart. David was a man of purity and holiness, worship and praise, and he brought honor to God, and God declared that David was a man after his own heart. But David failed God when he slept with Bathsheba and lied about it and had her husband killed. What did he do? He failed God in his strength. Yeah. So my brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to tell you, you've got to be careful in your walk. And some of us are so high-minded that we won't do this, we won't do that. you got to be careful saying what you won't do. Because the very moment you tempt, uh, uh, tempt God with that saying, Satan began to attempt you in bringing you down. That's what he did to Peter. That's what he did to all of these men. Listen, when I look at our text, we find this about Peter. God had already told him, Jesus said, uh, Peter, let me warn you about something. Satan has desired to tempt you and to sift you as sweet. Satan has desired. What does that mean? Satan asked me if he could tempt you because he couldn't do it without my approval. All right, all right. But when you are tempted, when you are sifted, when you when you come up, strengthen the brethren. That's what Jesus said to Peter. But Peter said, I'll never deny you. No, no, not me. Not me. Be careful what you say. You got to trust God in every step of the way. You got to trust him. That's what Peter did. Listen to this. Peter said, I will. He didn't say, through you I can. He said, I will. Peter stood in his own strength. Listen, you got to be careful not to try to stand in your own strength. Are y'all with me? Amen. Amen. And he failed. Peter failed. My brothers and sisters, we're all guilty of failing God. Yes, but as I look at our text, I see some things here. That even though Peter failed, he saw some things about God that I want you to make note of in your life. See, what Satan wants to do, he wants to keep uh, reminding you. See, First of all, he attacks you as the tempter. He tempts you to fail God. He said, go ahead and do it. It ain't, doesn't matter. Nothing's going to happen. It's going to be all right. Everybody's doing it. Just do what you feel like doing. That's what he'll say to you. And then you keep listening to that, and then all of a sudden, that's what you do. And what does he do? He 
he, he, he flips the script on you. He goes from being a tempter to being a, a accuser, and he goes to God and said, look at him, that's one of yours. And then he'll come to you and say, listen, you're going to get caught. You know you shouldn't have done that. You done messed up. God can't use you. You're an embarrassment. That's what he'll do. He goes from the tempter to the accuser at the flip of a switch. See, you got to understand, you got to listen to those voices, but you got to hear the voice of God. Amen. Because even in this, as I said when I started, many of us sit down on our gifts and our abilities and our, our, our opportunities because of the failures we've had in our lives. I, I, I might not be talking to somebody, maybe I'm just talking to myself because I every once in a while, when I think God is moving in a great way in my life, then what happened in my past would always come up in my mind and it'll somehow put a hamper on where I am. But then I got to remember what he's saying. Look at what Peter did. This is something you need to understand. When Peter sinned against God and these three things that he learned from that, what are they? I'm glad you asked. He learned, number one, that God is still sovereign. Listen, when you fail, remember that the God we serve is sovereign. What do I mean by that? I mean that God is still in control. Even when we get out of control, God is in control. God is sovereign. How does he learn that from this passage? I'll tell you how. Because guess what the rooster did when Jesus said it would? Do you, can you imagine how many roosters he had to hold quiet until that very moment? God is in control. He is sovereign. So even when you fail, when you fall to understand God does not fail and he's not weakened in his ability to do what he said he would do. God is still in control even when you get out of control. Second thing Peter learned about this is that God is sympathetic because listen, when, when the rooster crowed and Peter Remember what Jesus had said. He looked at Jesus and Jesus looked at him. And people want you to think that Jesus looked at him with an eye of condemnation. I'll stop by to tell you. He did not look at Peter with an eye of condemnation. He looked at Peter with an eye of compassion because he understood that this was going to happen to Peter. And Jesus was concerned about Peter letting this keep him down. See, sometimes when you get knocked down, you fall backwards. But I want to tell you, you need to fall forward so you can get back up again. So when you, Jesus looked at Peter, he didn't look at him with a condescending look like we do people. He didn't look at Peter with condemnation in his eyes. No, he looked at Peter with compassion. Look at the person next to you and say, listen, I don't know what's happened in your life. I don't know what's going on right now. But the God we serve is sympathetic to your situation. In other words, he cares about you. And God does not want you to fall. God does not want you to fail. God wants you to succeed. Seed and prosper. The third thing he learns about God in his failure. Not only is God sovereign, not only is he sympathetic, but he was secure. See, I want to tell you something. When you fail God, that don't put you out of God's way. That's not put you, that does not put you out of God's family. You're still secure. As a child of God, if you fail God, that doesn't mean you're no longer a child of God. You are secure. Oh, yeah. Where did he get that from? Because Peter remembered. Oh, okay. What did Peter remember? He remembered that Jesus said, Satan has desired to sift you as sweet. Mm -hmm. But when you are converted, what does that mean? Oh, yeah. He's going to sift you. He's going to shake you up. But when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. Yeah. Jesus was saying, Peter, remember this, Brother Martin, that Jesus did not give up on him. That he didn't stop being who he was because he failed and denied Christ. Yeah. He did not stop being who he was because he failed and sinned. And he remembered what Jesus said, that you would be converted. You would be restored. 
and you would be an instrument. Listen, I want to tell you something. Don't you allow the enemy to tell you you're no longer good for God. God no longer loves you. You're no longer a child of God because of anything that's happened in your life because God loves you with an everlasting love and God will forgive you and when God forgives you, he doesn't bring it up again. It's Satan that brings it up. It's you that allow your mind to bring it up and it's people that brings it up in your life. Listen, you might be uh, disqualified in the eyes of man, but God does not disqualify you. If you would just turn from your sin and come to him, guess what? God will restore you to that place of rightness. He understood, listen, that yes, he was secure. And you need to sometimes tell the enemy when he comes to you that you are safe and secure in him. You need to tell the enemy that God still loves you. And the enemy want to tell you that God doesn't love you, but I'll stop by to tell you the God we serve is a God that loves you with an everlasting love. Yeah. Have I got a witness here? Yeah. I'm going to let you go. I know you got things to do, but there's some, something else I need to tell you about this. When I look at what Jesus said to Peter, there's three things I want you to remember that God knows about you yeah. and God knows about me. It's the same, same thing that he knows about everybody. Yeah. Don't you think God doesn't know everything about you? He knows everything about you. Oh, my brothers and sisters, you got to understand that. That he knows everything there is about you and he loves you anyway. Three things the Bible and our text shows us that God knows. Number one, he knows your failures. He knows when you're going to fail him. He knows when you're going to mess up. He knows all these things about you and guess what? He loves you anyway. He knew Peter would have failure. Not only does he know your failure, he knows your fears. He knows the things that hold you back. He knows the things that stops you in your track. God understands all that about you. He knows your failures. He knows your fears. But guess what, my brothers and sisters? He also knows your future. And as I said, your past does not define your future. Your past failures do not determine who you're going to be. Failure is not fatal. He knew what Peter would do. He understood where Peter would go. God knows that about you and God knows that about me. But what I got to remember, I got to remember the right things about God. When Peter remembered what God said, he went out and wept bitterly. Peter repented of his sin. Guess what? Because he knew that that's what was needed. He was convicted in his heart. Let's listen. When God brings conviction you and you confess your sin, God forgives you and he forgets. He casts your sins as far as the east is from the west. The God we serve is one that loves us. Yeah. Yeah. And he cares about us. Yeah. Oh, he knew about Peter's future because Peter is the one that on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that after the Holy Ghost had come, and falling upon them. Peter is the one that as men uh, and women was talking about what was going on. Said these men are drunk. Yeah. The way they're acting. There's something wrong with them. Peter stood up in his boldness now. And said these men are not drunk. Being that it's only noonday. Yeah. He said but this is that that was prophesied by the prophet Joel. Where God said in the last days I pour up my spirit upon all flesh. Yeah. I stop by to tell you God knew where Peter would be in the midst of or prior to Peter's failing. And I want you to know you can trust God anyway. Yeah. You might have failed God but the God we serve will never fail you. Yeah. Have I got a witness here? Yeah. I got to leave y'all now but listen I want you to remember this. That God told us, and you need to be reminded that failure is not final. What's happened in your past does not dictate your future. And the God we serve loves you with an everlasting love. And if you will confess your sin, he'll forgive you of your sin and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. The God we serve loves us so much that he died upon the cross so we could have eternal life. Well, I'm through now. But when I look at what? Jesus said to Peter, he said, Peter, the enemy desired to sift you as wheat. The enemy wanted to shift, uh, sift Peter and mess with Peter so he could fail. And you know how that works. Whenever you sift wheat, it's the chaff, the chaff that falls to the bottom. And the wheat remains. Satan didn't know what he was doing. Because whenever Satan comes against you, and when he sifts you, the only thing he's doing 
is shaking the things away and are loose from you. Yeah. They're standing in the way of you being who God wants you to be. Yes, sir. So I tell somebody, don't get so alarmed by the sifting. Yeah. I don't understand and I don't know what's going on in your particular life. And the hard things you're coming against and whatever seems to be pressing you down. But I stop out to tell you God is going to use that yeah. like he did in Peter's life. Yeah. I believe that there were some things in Peter's life he would never have recognized yeah. if the enemy had not sifted him that night. And I want to tell you there's some things in your life you won't recognize until Satan begins to attack and affront you. Yeah. But I stop out to tell you whatever's going on, just hold on to God's unchanging hand. And when you hold on to God's unchanging hand, God will bring you out like you're supposed to be. And when God gets through with you, you'll come forth as pure gold. I'm through now, but I want somebody to understand. It might be hard in your way, but God is working it out. You need to stand on what he said. As Peter remembered what he said, I want you to remember what he said. Romans 8. 28 said all things work it together for good to them that love him but I'm trying to tell somebody uh, God is able uh, to take your past successes uh, God is able um, to take your past failures uh, and use those things uh, to make you into what he wants you to be uh, you need to learn uh, to lean and depend on him uh, he is able uh, he's ready and he's willing uh, and he'll do what he said. Just lift your head towards heaven and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw thyself from me, where should I go? I stand now at the foot of the cross where mercy comes out. I'm going to trust in him. He's able. I said he's able. He's able. He's ready and willing. Just trust in him and hold on to his unchanging hand. Everything. 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 Going to be all right. Will you trust him? Will you hold on? Will you say, Father, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll say what you want me to say. I may not know how. I might not know what. But I know who. And he's there. Father, I thank you. And I bless your name. Hide the word in the hearts of the hearers. Is my prayer. And I thank you, God, that you do that. Let not the enemy snatch it, but let it work in us. What you desire and what you desire. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Come on and give God a hand of praise.